Approach, Delta to 202 with information Yankee at 7000. Delta 2202 radar contact. Hello everyone, this is a demonstration of how to get an aircraft to fly an ILS approach. In this particular case, uh, we're coming into Los Angeles International Airport and we've just accepted the handoff for Delta 2202, which is level at 7,000 and 250 knots, making its way towards, looks like, a Tarak intersection. One of the keys to a successful ILS, ILS approach within the game is that you do not want the aircraft directly on the runway center line or directly on the runway heading when you clear them for the approach. That's a key principle for the game. It doesn't match anything in real life, but it's the way the game works. So we will turn Delta 2202 now so that it is paralleling the runway heading so that later we can turn them towards the runway center line when we clear them for the approach. Delta 2202, fly heading 240. Flight heading to 40, Delta to 202. The heading of 240 actually slightly diverges from the uh, LAX runway complex. All of those runways, both 24 and 25, are actually on uh, magnetic headings of 250 or 251 degrees. The 240 heading is just to ensure we have a little bit of separation from the center line by the time. Uh, that Delta 2202 gets close to the airport. The particular waypoints that you see uh, on my map here, uh, Tarek, Fueler, Gate, Honda, and Jetsa, uh, do not appear on your maps, uh, most likely, unless you've uh, done some editing already. These are waypoints I added with the uh, airspace editor that correspond to the actual waypoints for the runway 25 left approach. They're not really that useful or important in this game for lateral navigation, but they are helpful for a vertical navigation, for giving us a clue as to what altitude the airplane should be at, at what distance from the airport. I'm going to pause the game just for a second here now, so that we can uh, have a look at the actual runway 25 left um, procedure. Uh, and here it is. the. Uh, the diagram up here gives the lateral navigation and that you can see the uh, waypoints on here. Tarek, Fueler, uh, I'll move the display up just a little bit, Gate, and then Honda. What's more important and more interesting is the vertical descent profile that's shown down here. The uh, aircraft uh, in real life when they fly this approach uh, try to be at uh, 9,000 feet as they cross Tarek at 7,000 feet as they cross Fueler, at 5,000 feet then as they cross Gate, and a bit lower as they cross Honda. The little pound sign here indicates that depending upon what ATC has asked them to do, this is the altitude at which they should intercept the glide slope for the approach uh, for the ILS into the airport. The uh, game itself will permit uh, the ILS approach to be, for them to be cleared onto the approach uh, really at pretty any reasonable altitude. I've tried everything from slightly above 7,000 all the way down to something uh, uh, around 3,500 and all of them seem to work approximately. You do not have to get the aircraft all the way down under 3,000 feet as some postings in the forum have indicated. So uh, even if you don't have these particular uh, waypoints on your uh, map yet, you can pick any of them that are in the standard thing, uh, make a note to yourself as approximately what distance they correspond to as compared to uh, the diagram which you can get from uh, airnav.com and if you note here this number in the little um, bullet shape tells you the distance from the airport uh, for each of them so Tarek is at 33 miles, Fueler at 26, Gate at 17 and so forth. I will uh, unpause the game and we'll continue The heading for Delta 2202 looks fine right now, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, accelerate the game speed. In fact, let me bring the command panel up into view. 
and we'll accelerate the game speed a bit. Delta 2202 is already at 7,000 feet, which is where they should be at Fueler, according to the picture we looked at just a moment ago. We'll want to descend them to 5,000 as soon as they pass Fueler while they're on their way to gate. And as we get a little bit closer to Fueler, I'll go ahead and slow the game back to normal speed for that uh, radio conversation. Delta 2202, descend and maintain 5,000. Descend and maintain 5,000, Delta 2202. 5,000 will be a uh, perfectly acceptable altitude for clearing them on to the ILS approach. We'll go ahead now and turn them back toward the ILS approach at a uh, about a 20 degree intercept angle. Delta 2202, turn right heading 270. Turn right heading 270, Delta 2202. The actual approach course is a heading of 250. So the 270 heading I just gave to Delta 2202, we'll put them on a 20 degree intercept course. If we project the line uh, from where they are now, on that 270 heading, which is straight to the left across the screen, by the way. Uh, they should fly on to the uh, ILS at uh, roughly just inside gate and uh, well outside Honda. So as soon as they cross the 15-mile uh, the, uh, range marker, this is 5, 10, and 15 miles, Actually, uh, just as an experiment, this time we will try to clear them out uh, a little further than that and see what happens. Delta 2202, cleared ILS runway 25 left approach. Cleared ILS runway 25 left approach, Delta 2202. So there you go. We were indeed able to clear them as far out as almost 20 miles from the airport onto the approach. The aircraft will fly directly onto the localizer. This is what would happen in real life as well. And then make a uh, small left turn to fly down the localizer and down the glide slope. We'll hand them over to the tower about the time they reach Hunda. Technically, uh, the tower handover occurs at the final approach fix, which in this particular case is JETSA, but the game will allow us to hand over to the tower earlier than that. And there we can see uh, he's turning on to the localizer. And just because it's fairly boring to watch him fly straight now, we'll go ahead and hand him off to the tower. Delta 2202, contact tower 133.9er. Contact tower on 133.9er, Delta 2202. And that is how you execute an ILS approach in uh, TRACON 2012. So just to recap, the key points were to fly the aircraft parallel to, but not exactly on, the runway center line until it gets relatively close to the uh, airport within, say, 20 miles. Then give them either a right or a left turn, depending on which side you have them paralleling, paralleling the approach course, uh, so that they're on about a 20 to 30 degree heading towards the uh, the localizer. 
I have found 20 degrees to be substantially more reliable than 30 degrees. 30 degrees sometimes they will not accept the uh, localizer when it's exactly at 30. So I've just used practiced uh, making them be at 20 degrees to the localizer before I hand them off and that has worked pretty much a hundred percent of the time. Be prepared in case the plane does not accept the uh, the approach to uh, give them a visual approach so that you don't mess up your sequencing. That's particularly important if you have a lot of aircraft uh, that you're handling. With one aircraft you have time to fly them back and forth across the localizer until they accept the ILS approach if that's what you want to do, but that will generally not be possible when it's very busy. Now note the, uh, the backup position of using a uh, visual approach only applies in clear weather. If uh, we were simulating weather and it was overcast uh, then that would not be an option and you would have to find a way to actually get them on the ILS approach. That's it for now. We'll uh, make another video a bit later where we uh, show how to manage a whole lot of traffic coming into the area rather than just a single airplane, but for now practice your ILS approaches and vectoring the airplanes uh, onto the final approach, co approach course from a little ways off and uh, then clearing them. Have fun with the game.